Hello, everybody. My name is Jenny Larson. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to first start by thanking Photodex for inviting me here today to help celebrate Reunion Month. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about making memorable reunion slideshows, or as I prefer to call it. Oops. Excuse me. <laughs> Technical difficulties, as I prefer to call it. How to have fun and make money making people cry. So first, a little bit about myself. I, um, I live in Glenview, Illinois, which is just a little north of Chicago. Originally, I went to Northwestern and got a degree in communication studies, and then I went to law school at the University of Southern California. But I never practiced law. I got married and had kids, and I was looking for something that I could do from home um, that would combine my love of photography and my passion um, my passion for photos and the stories behind them. So in 2003, I started my own videography business. Um, I called myself a videographer because I was making slideshows for people, and I didn't really have another name for what I did. Then um, until last year, in 2013, when I learned about an organization called APO, the Association of Personal Photo Organizers. And, um, and that's really much more captures what I do for people. N note that the information about APO and uh, a lot more is available as a PDF, which you can download on the Google Plus Hangout page and the Slideshow blog. So I put together a lot of information that I will be talking about both today and tomorrow. You can get it all there so you don't have to take as many notes. <laughs> so I'm a certified photo organizer through APO. I make about three to four slideshows a week for my clients using Web, ProShow Web and ProShow Producer. Um, I also spend a lot of time helping clients manage and organize years of printed photos, slides, memorabilia. Um, I help transfer aging video and camcorder tapes to DVD. And I also help clients organize their digital photos and develop backup plans for their photos as well. And last but not least, I have three boys and a small zoo of animals. So that's a little bit about me. I make you know a lot of slideshows both for both for clients and for my family. So I feel like I'm you know can talk to you today as both uh, you know in both capacities as a as a professional and as a family you know, someone who does shows for their family. So first, let's give a quick overview about what we're talking about today and tomorrow. Today is really about getting organized, getting you know everything you need ready to make a great show. We'll talk about picking photos, scanning, retouching, videos, how to insert the video clips, um, sources for royalty-free music, and um, which pro show software might be right for you. And tomorrow we'll get into the nuts and bolts of actually making the show, putting it all together. We'll talk about pacing, style, theme. I'll show some examples of shows I've made, uh, cool tricks to help your show stand out. Um, different ways to uh, sh to share your slideshow once it's created, including some cool ideas for how to package it and um, some pricing ideas if you're going to be charging as a you know doing this professionally. Also, you know maybe talk about the idea of offering AV equipment for rental to uh, boost your profits. So I'm guessing if you're here, you probably know why why to make a slideshow. There there's something absolutely magical about um, combining the right photos with the right music. It, it, evoke, it evokes an emotional response that you know a photo book alone or just holding a photo cannot capture. So I'm usually telling my organizational clients that you know it's a great way to do something with your photos. You know the, the whole beauty of getting your photos organized is being able to bring them back into your life and use them and, and enjoy them. And a slideshow is a perfect example of that. Um, it's also slideshows are a fantastic gift, and this is probably 90% of my business are people hiring me as a, to make a slideshow as a gift for someone, whether that's for a birthday, an anniversary, a rehearsal, a wedding rehearsal, graduation, a mitzvah. Um, of course, also a great way to tell a family story for a reunion. There's, you know, I, I've also done you know, slideshows for you know vacations, memorial services, sports recaps, summer camps, school year DVDs. You know, there's just tons of you know. Tons of ways that you can put a slideshow together and uh, really entertain a crowd and, and make them, you know, give them a, you know, a big wow with a great slideshow. Just real quick, I want to note that um, even though I did mention I went to law school, um, we're not going to be talking at all today about copyrights for photos or music. Um, that's just a whole other topic for another day. So we're going to assume for today's purposes that you have the legal right to use any photos and music that you're going to be incorporating into your own shows. And secondly, I'm not going to delve too much into specific training about ProShow software. I'm really talking more broadly about how to put shows together. 
Um, if you want great training on any of the ProShow software, I recommend a couple of, of resources, including um, the ProShow website, or Photodex website itself. There are a number of great tutorials. That's how I learned to use the software originally. Also, there is a great book called Secrets of Pro Show Experts, and you can buy that on the Photodex website as well. And I highly recommend both of those if you're just getting started with any of the Pro Show software. Okay, so let's go. Here's the, um, the first question you need to think is, who is your show for? Is it for a paying client? Um, if you're working for a paying client, then really you have the easy job. You know, for me, putting a show together using Pro Show software is the easy part. The hard part is really picking the content and uh, you know that's going to make the story memorable. We're going to talk over some tips and tricks during this presentation that you can use to guide your clients and help them pick the right photos. Or is that you know is the show for your family? If you're putting together a show for your own family, then you are in charge of making all those editorial decisions about content, and um, this means searching through your own photos to find the best photo pics to tell the story. And there's some unique challenges that we'll discuss. We're going to be talking about both of these types of shows. First, working for a client. <laughs> Most of my clients are pretty stressed out when they when they start this process. It can be really daunting. They're you know trying to give an, an amazing gift, and you know everybody at the party is going to be watching the show. So there's a lot of stress involved in getting it right. Um, I try to make my value known by assuring clients that I'm going to be there for them every step of the process, and really hold their hands from narrowing down photos to selecting the perfect music. So you know I just try to try to put their mind at ease a bit by assuring them that I'm an expert and I will help take over the process for them. I do get a lot of questions though and um, I found over time that a good order form and a lot of information on my website can save me from having the same conversation with prospective clients over and over. Typically when I uh, first meet with a the client they've gotten their photos together and we sit down. Um, sometimes a client really wants to show me every photo and talk about it and others just want to hand me the bag and move on. You know. but. I, this initial client meeting is extremely important. Um, it's, it's where you're going to learn about the audience for the show you're going to be creating and it will allow you to better make those uh, key editorial decisions like what theme to use, how to appropriately pace the show. We'll delve into these topics a bit more tomorrow um, but right now I just want to stress how important it is to really get a good feel for your client and uh, the audience that they're making the show for. Now, if the client is you and your own family, then that brings its own set of challenges. Um, the first and probably most common challenge is you know, it takes a long time to go through your photos because people get bogged down reminiscing. I encourage my clients to spend no more than five seconds per photo. Pick up a photo, take a look at it, decide if it's in or out, and move on. If you start spending too much time reminiscing, you will never get through all your photos. Also sometimes um, when you're trying to get photos from a number of different family members, there's an imbalance. Um, perhaps there are a number of siblings for a 50th wedding anniversary show and some of the siblings are married with children and then one of them is not. I've encountered this quite a bit actually and it's kind of hard to make that one, you know, if there's a big grandkid section, it's kind of hard to make everyone feel included equally. So your job as the person putting the show together is really do your best to reach out, ask around, try and get as many photos so that everybody feels fairly represented. Don't need any more stress at a family reunion. Another unique situation is um, the case of divorce. Oftentimes there, you know, people appear in photos, you really want to use the photo but the person's no longer in the family. Um, I've very, very often I crop people out, you know, you need to consider the feelings of everyone involved and see what they want to do. Um, you know, in the worst case scenario you could always Photoshop the people out if you need to. Um, but the, uh, you know, another tricky situation is is handling death. You know, obviously keeping a person's memory alive through uh, through photos and music in a slideshow can be a lovely reminder. But I encourage you to be really careful and listen listen to the music that matches up with the photos that appear because you don't want any inappropriate lyrics, um, you know, syncing to those t those photos of the person who's passed away. So when I'm working with clients or even doing a show for a friend or a family for myself, um, one of the biggest challenges is gathering content from people from faraway places. Now it's getting easier, you know, obviously email is a great way to get photos, but oftentimes people, people wait, <laughs> they delay, they don't email properly. Um, so I always give a deadline way in advance of when I really need the material. I also like to use Dropbox to share large numbers of photos. 
that reduces the risk that, that the person will downsize the photos and send me low quality images. Usually send a lot of follow up and reminder emails. But in general, I, I always prefer to get the, my hands on the actual photos and do the scanning myself. So I try to encourage people to actually send me photos when possible. And if not, I, if they're going to scan themselves, then I give them very specific advice about what resolution to use and what format I want the photos in. And sometimes they follow it and sometimes they don't. <laughs> so the key to a great slideshow is obviously the photos. The photo, you know, the right photos make a, a, the difference between a show that's very exciting or quite boring, the kind where everyone's checking their watch. I'm sure you've all sat through them at various, you know, parties through the years. Your shows will be on the exciting end of the spectrum after watching at least two days. So the first thing is that in terms of picking the right photos, the first question I always get is, how many photos should I include? How, you know, how long should it be? Well, that's really hard to answer. Really, the audience determines the length of the show. If your audience is just your family or some close friends, then you can make a longer show, limited only by your budget, I suppose, if you're hiring or paying someone to create a show for you. But for a larger audience, for a large party, or certainly for a wedding you know, re reception, anything like that, keep it short and sweet. You definitely don't want to overstay your welcome. Typically, I recommend under 10 minutes. Um, we'll, you'll see a chart here in just a minute. Now, very, this is very important. Every photo that you pick should move the story forward. This is the most important part of the process. The key is to balance the story. Um, for example, if you're making a family reunion slideshow that tells the story of a family over many decades, you may have a section uh, devoted to family vacations. So if you have multiple photos from a single vacation, only pick the best one or two or three you know, that, that really capture who was there and what you did. Just try to keep everything in balance so that the story you know, makes sense. Um, if a photo is repetitive, leave it out. If, if in doubt, leave it out. <laughs> and um, no matter what the audience size, big or small, leave them wanting more. You can always replay the show, but you don't want people to be wondering when, they, when it's safe to get up and leave and feeling uncomfortable. And all of these things having been said, for me, the client is always right. Um, you can give all the advice in the world, and if your client is dead set on a 45-minute slideshow for a you know for a 500-person wedding, you know that's what they're gonna that's what you're gonna make. <laughs> um, at least for you know for me, I try to make the show fresh and exciting. So if it is long, at least people aren't you know, you know they're enjoying themselves for the long show. So here is a, a quick chart, and this is again on the handout. I wanted everybody to just see. Um, you know, <laughs> Not, not. Hopefully, my math is is correct here. <laughs> um, but if uh, if you have a various number of photos, 100, 150, depending on how long you have the photos on the screen, and you have one second transitions, here's how long your show will end up. Now, for me, the sweet spot. And I'm not sure if you guys are going to be able to see my cursor here, but hopefully you can. For me, the sweet spot is right around here. 150 photos, around four and a half to five seconds a photo. It's a really nice number. I think it's a nice. It's, it makes a nice length of show, and it's not too fast, and it's not too slow. Um, that's where a good majority of my slideshows fall in that category. But you can see how quickly you get up to you know a half an hour show with you know longer photos and quickly adds up. Now, oops, hold on a second. I've got to switch a couple pages here so I can catch up. Another, you know, aside from picking the right photos, you know the the photos have to be good quality um, to make a great slideshow. You can see this photo here. You know, might be a great, might have been a great photo, but it was emailed and downsized too many times, and as a result, is way too pixelated and would be very tough to use. And I would never use a photo like this unless there was like this was the only picture of these four people that existed on the planet. <laughs> Otherwise, I would not use something like this. So you need to encourage, you know, you. For your own, you know, your own choices, pick pick photos that are high resolution. Encourage people to submit photos that are high high resolution, and if possible, I also like to pick horizontal or landscape orientation photos. Now, ProShow has really great uh, uh, effects for e both portrait or landscape photos, but I have found over time that sometimes you want to forego the effects altogether, and in that case, a, a horizontal or landscape photo really will fill the screen better than a portrait. Um, but, you know, so just given the choice, if you have two similar photos, always choose the one that's horizontal, in my opinion. Also, don't limit yourself to just photos. Uh, think, think beyond the photo. Use, uh, I often scan invitations, uh, artwork, newspaper articles, slides, of course. Um, 
you know, I just like to really mix it up and not just include photos in my slideshow. I think a, you know, a great slideshow can can have a number of different uh, different things included and makes it a lot more enjoyable and keeps the audience on their toes. Um, now, people in general, the people that are watching your show want to see themselves. People always like that. Um, that said, I don't want you to go too crazy making sure every obscure relative in attendance is in there an equal number of times. I've seen clients do this over the years. They get really crazy and try and count people. And unless you have a really crazy relative, I don't think that's necessary. As long as overall the overall look, you know, feel of the show is that everyone was represented. So don't don't worry about that too much. Oops. Um, however, I will say that there's one time when I do worry um, more about having everyone represented, and that's when I'm making uh, like something for a school, a summer camp, or a sports team. In that case, I like to enlist the help of a team parent, someone who can help me make sure that everybody's in there, if not an exact even number of times, at least make sure that no one's left out. Okay, so next, let's get into how, how we're going to start making this once we've picked out our photos. you got to digitize them if they're printed photos. So. For scanning, I always scan at a minimum of 300 dpi. Now that's overkill for a uh, for screen resolution. However, I figure you're only going to be scanning these once, so scan for archival purposes. And um, you can also, at the end of the day, give a CD with all of the retouched images to to the people who are watching your show if they if they want it. It's just a nice little add-on. Um, and I like to crop and zoom, so again, hi higher resolution means more options for being able to zoom in on photos. And um, I also print the photos on, as you'll see tomorrow, when I design DVD cases. So I want them scanned high enough that I can blow them up a bit for uh, to print on a DVD case. So what scanner to use? Um, I scanned for about 12 years on just a flatbed, one or two at a time, as you've probably all done. And then uh, last year learned about this Kodak high-speed scanner, which I'm not exaggerating when I say it has changed my life, <laughs> my work life anyway. Um, it's just super easy to use. It's made by Kodak, and you'll find the information on the handout. It scans The one I have is the PS50. I think it scans about 50 photos a minute. Um, it's pretty fast. It's so fast I can hardly keep up with it sometimes. But I want to show you how easy it is. I have my very willing and helpful volunteer, my 11-year-old son, who's going to show you real quick how fast and easy it is to scan. Hi, Caleb. How old are you? 11. How easy is it to scan 100 photos in under two minutes? Very easy. All right. Let's see it. Don't worry, we're not going to watch the whole two minutes of scanning. It's edited. Okay, so easy. Even an 11-year-old could do it. OK, so you can see he was extremely excited to help me out there. Um, but yeah, the, the high-speed scanner has made my life really easy. But I've, uh, you know, my scanning life much easier. But I've also included on the on the resource guide a couple of other scanning options. You know, if you're if you have a big family collection of photos, I really think it might be worth looking into getting you know getting a high-speed scanner. But scanning isn't for everyone. And if you don't feel like scanning, I have a couple of ideas for you. Um, there are a couple of scanning vendors that I like to use when I have a project that's too big and I can't do it all myself. One of them is called PhotoBridge. They're based in New Jersey. The other is EverPresent, based in uh, Newton, Massachusetts. And these are very high-quality scanning vendors who can help you get the best quality from your, uh, from, your, you know, from your photos and slides. Slides are extremely tricky to scan properly. So in that case, I almost always recommend you, hire, you know, outsource to a professional. One other thing I do after I've done the scanning is I create contact sheets, which I send to the client. Um, it serves as a storyboard, so we can make sure that everything's in the right order before I make a show and then have to go back and do a ton of editing because I had something out of order. This is especially important when you're integrating digital photos with scanned photos. You know, Even with the best numbering system, sometimes things get messed up. And so it's really nice to give a quick, uh, quick check uh, you know, once over to make sure everything's in the right order. And you can even match up the songs to the photos you want to use on this. I just using uh, using Photoshop Elements create contact sheets and I you know create PDFs and email them to the client just to make sure that everything's in the right order before I launch into creating the show. So, one of the biggest things mistakes that I see <clears throat> when I watch slideshows made by other people at various events and you know 
sometimes this, my kid's teacher will send home a slideshow at the end of the year. Um, <laughs> one of the biggest mistakes, I think, is not retouching photos. I see a ton of people who leave in red eye, who don't crop the little white border from around a photo, and it flickers. So one of the things I think you can do to give your show the most professional touch is retouch each and every photo that goes into each and every slideshow. I only spend a couple seconds on each photo, but it's an important couple of seconds. And look here, let me just show you. I have another video here of me retouching very quickly a couple of photos. So, you know, I just hit the auto color correct button. Um, sometimes if a photo has like a significant flaw on a face, I will, again using elements, get the spot healing tool just to cover up, you know, to conceal the, uh, the, the flaw that's in a face. I don't go too crazy if there's a speck or a scratch in the sky, but if it's on someone's face, I want to fix it up. So, oh, that, that was a little big, so. Um, once, once I do that, again, on to the next photo. Quick color correct, save it, close it, move on. You can see I'm only spending a couple seconds here, but at the end of the day, it makes a huge difference. And I'm really surprised how many people don't retouch their photos. Um, Here's one that has a little more of a flaw. It's got a tear here, and um, if I, I could crop it out, but it'd be super narrow. And I would, you know, so I, uh, using the clone stamp tool, I go over and um, just select another part of the photo, and then you know, the, that's the same color, and fill it in. So now when I crop it, um, that'll look just fine. So that's it. That's how much time I spend on photos. It's only a couple seconds per photo, but it makes a huge difference. Um, I always cut out the time date stamp as well, if possible. Um, always fix red eye. And um, that's it. I also, um, something I do quite frequently is I take all black and white images and I convert them using Photoshop elements to grayscale. I'll show you here. These are some uh, four images, and then you'll see them retouched, but uh, or turn to grayscale. You can see black and white images often have like a lot of different color variations. They age differently. I want to take the emphasis away from the differences in the photos. So people are really looking at what's happening in the photo, the emotion behind it, the people. So here are the same four images, all in grayscale. Now, if those were in a show, you would need, you know, you would just be absorbing what's going on in the show, in the photo. You wouldn't be like, ooh, that one's kind of yellowed. Ooh, that one's sepia. So that's my, you know, something that I always do. Um, last but not least, calling the experts. Like this photo a client gave me, it was torn in half over a century ago, and it was way too, <laughs> that's way out of my uh, Photoshopping skill set. So I use the folks at Hollywood Photo Fix. Um, again, on the resource guide, you'll find that. But here they retouched it, and I think it looks dramatically better. And it, you know, they have a really quick turnaround. Um, it's just a great resource. Um, or you could always call a photo organizer if you need to reach out to Hollywood Photo Fix. So. Now, let's talk about using video clips in slideshows. Um, I have to tell you that video is a great way to break up the monotony of just having photo after photo after photo. I just did a, a slideshow for a really good friend of mine. It was for her, for her 50th birthday. And it was longer than I would have wanted. Um, the show ended up being almost 25 minutes because we had so many vid great video clips sent in. Um, and I was a little worried because at the party there was a band. And I was concerned that maybe... Um, it was too long, and people are going to want to get back to the band downstairs. But you know, there's probably 100 people watching this slideshow, and I have never had more people come up to me afterwards and say how much they loved a show. It was probably one of my best received shows ever. It was just two weeks ago, and a number of the people commented that the reason that you know they wished it had gone longer, and that what they really loved about it were the video clips. So um, again, really, I think video is a nice surprise. It really adds a lot to you know you're creating a video. Why not put some video clips in? Um, that said, the clips need to be uh, tightly edited. Just like you wouldn't have a photo on the screen for 30 or 40 seconds, your, your video clips also need to be boiled down just to the action. You don't want them overst overstaying their welcome either. If you want to digitize some old footage, um, you could either do it yourself, and I've put some information on that resource guide, or better yet, again, give a call to the folks I mentioned earlier, EverPresent or PhotoBridge. They would both do digi digitization. and. Um, send you uh, the digitized footage, which is what you need to incorporate into a slideshow. Um, actually, EverPresent will actually do video clipping for you and provide you with minute-by-minute -minute screenshots so you can pick the best segments for your slideshow without having to rewatch hours of footage. They make the clips available online, which is great when you're in a rush and you're preparing for a family event. It's nice that they help. Um, they, they go that extra step. Now, 
another another trick about using video clips is you don't you know if if you're using new footage you don't need a you know a fancy cameraman and a fancy expensive camera. Most of the clips we used in that 50th reunion show were shot with iPhones. There were people who were who couldn't make it to the event who were sending in you know well wishes to the birthday girl. And one of the things I always tell people, and they rarely listen, <laughs> is turn your phone sideways if you're shooting a video. You'll see here. Um, Two clips. The first one is actually my mom, who did not listen to me, who sent in a video clip for my friend, but didn't <laughs> didn't turn the phone. And then another clip from uh, from a, a neighbor who who did turn the phone happy, sideways. Uh, happy birthday to you from sunny, hot Arizona. I am just really glad that we are friends. So I just want to say I hope you were having a wonderful birthday. And like a fine wine, you only get better with it. Happy birthday. So you see it makes such a difference when the video fills the screen. Um, it also looks weird. You know, the video that my mom sent, if I had applied any effects to it, it would have looked really awkward. There would have been black bars on the sides. Um, but so speaking of effects, when, when you're using video, I typically don't use a lot of effects. Um, if I do, I keep it really simple and I don't do crazy transitions because there's already a lot happening with the video. There's movement. So you don't want to have add more movement and start getting people dizzy. Some great ideas for incorporating video clips. Um, humor is a great way. You know, something funny, uh, like you saw just there, guests who can't come to the party um, or family members who can't come to the reunion. Just you know, it's a way to like incorporate them into the event by having them send a message. If you're making an anniversary video, uh, maybe if a clip uh, from a from the actual wedding would be great. Like maybe the first kiss or first dance. Sports team, you know, you've got to include video, touchdown, whatever, a great play, or the team celebrating after the after a game. Um, another great way is that I use a lot of shows. We'll talk tomorrow about how to end slideshows appropriately and fun, you know, in a fun way. And I often use like an ending message where people, um, you know, get together and you know either say happy birthday or we love you, something just to end it, and where, where there's audio involved. So here's just a real quick sample. So again, just just better than a photo with them and the words, you know, happy birthday on the screen. It's just nice to actually hear them saying those words, and um, it's just a, a nice way to end it. So now uh, we're getting down to the end of of part one. Um, how to pick great music. So in general, you need to pick music not pick music that you like. Um, you need to pick music that the recipient likes. So, um, you know, your grandma probably doesn't know the groups your kids are listening to and she won't appreciate your, their music. So unless this is your grandma, um, pick music that really the recipient is going to love. Uh, and avoid picking inappropriate music. Um, if you're making a video for a 90th birthday, the best is yet to come is not probably the best song to use. So inappropriate doesn't just mean you know lyrics that are inappropriate. Um, it means you know songs that really fit the mood and the occasion. It's really the most important thing you're going to do when you put together a show is pick the right music because the right music really makes or breaks a show. Uh, I always recommend people use a balance of sad or sentimental and upbeat songs so that people aren't just sobbing the entire time. Um, and it is nice, you know, as I said in the, in the opening slide, I like to make people cry. So it's uh, having a few emotional or sentimental songs in there are great, but just don't make it, you know, be too depressing. Now, one important thing is you need to normalize or balance the music in your show. And this is another uh, sort of rookie mistake I see a lot where if the first song, you know, if you have three or four songs in a show and the volume can often be very inconsistent. So make sure if you're using Pro Show Producer, you check the volume levels and you make sure that all of you, you can adjust volume in the, you know, you can fine tune the volume in Pro Show Producer. Highly recommend that you do that and make sure that they sound, the, all the songs sound about the same volume so that people don't get their ears blown out if like the third song is extremely loud and they've set the volume for a, a quieter song. Also make sure, you know, if you're using a lot of songs, you're probably going to need to fade them out early. You're probably not going to play them in their entirety. So do it at the right moment. Try not to do it in the in between lyrics. Try and do it either after the first or second chorus, maybe during a bridge. Um, just try, try to pick a, a moment that makes sense so the song doesn't end abruptly. And last but not least, there are a lot of great resources for royalty-free music um, that you can use without any copyright restrictions. 
And there's some listed again on that handout. The slideshow blog often has uh, ideas for royalty-free music. And this month, they, um, the slideshow blog actually lists some great s songs for family reunions. So I highly recommend you check that out. Now, real quick as we wrap up, let's figure out which, which version of ProShow you're going to use. ProShow Web is great. Love it. It is the lowest upfront costs. Um, it's extremely simple to use. You upload your photos and um, pick a song and off you go. has amazing themes and preset effects. I think they're really lovely, uh, really classic, well done, and for, all, for many different types of events and occasions. And for me, one of the great features is that it includes royalty-free music. And the music is actually sorted by, by tempo, by length, by theme, by, you know, it's just great ways to help you pick music that is really, really great. And tomorrow you'll, um, some of the samples that I'm going to be showing you of shows that I've created will have royalty-free music that I got from the ProShow web site. But as for, you know, there are a couple cons to, you know, limitations that ProShow web has that lead me over to producer. And those are, you can't sync your music to a specific group of photos using ProShow Web. If I want to do that, I have to download um, the Photoshop or the Photoshop, the, uh, the ProShow file from ProShow Web and bring it into Pro, ProShow Producer and um, start to edit it there. You also you have limited editing controls over specific effects on photos. If you don't like the way a photo an effect is applied to a specific specific photo, you can't change that. If you have to change the effect to something different altogether. You can't actually go in and fine tune effects. If that makes sense. And you can do that in Producer. Also, video clips are limited in the web version to about 30 seconds. But Producer. Um, ProShow Producer is you know, my, my go-to uh, go software right, you know, right now after 12 years of using many, many other products. Um, I like it because it, it gives you complete control over every little detail. And I forgot to mention this earlier, but you can even re do your photo retouching. Uh, most, you know, most things you can do within, uh, within ProShow Producer. You can crop, correct red eye. Um, you can do quite a bit. It also allows you the most sharing options. We'll talk tomorrow about how to share and distribute your video. Also has a nice selection of themes and effects that can give your show an amazingly professional look. In the, especially when you start getting add-on packs, you can really have beautiful, beautiful uh, slideshows. However, it's taking a bit here to click. Um, some of the cons I find sometimes. Well, first of all, it is the most expensive option up front, and. At least at first for me, and this is after having been making slideshows for 12 years, I found that the complete control over every little detail was a bit overwhelming, as was having like 2,500 effects to pick from. It took me a while to become familiar with them and, and really get to know the software. So it's definitely a learning curve, but it's worth it if you can get over that curve. And, you know, just in my opinion, the, the wizard themes that come, you know, preset with a producer are not, in my opinion, as great as the, the ones on the ProShow web version. Now, you can certainly create beautiful wizard themes and edit them, but um, that takes a little bit of time and knowing what the, what the options are and, you know, just as a little bit of an investment in time. Um, last but not least, there's no music included in, in ProShow producer. You have to get your own sources of royalty-free music. So to wrap up today, I always like to say, sweat the small stuff for a professional show. You need to retouch every photo and, you know, give thought to incorporating video, normalize the music. Um, and last but not least, if you get overwhelmed, consider hiring a professional. You might want to reach out and hire a, a photo organizer through the APO website. Many of us specialize in making slideshows for people. So if, if at the end of the day you get overwhelmed, you know you want to make a show, consider outsourcing. So for tomorrow, um, I welcome you to join me for part two. You will see a link to the right of the Hangout page to RSVP for tomorrow. And like I said, tomorrow we're really going to go into detail about like creating the show and pacing, and I'll show some samples. And I have a couple of cool tricks that are not you know, that that I think you'll like that are ways to really uh, spice up the show and make it make it a great uh, great uh, video presentation. Um, so. You also see links to tomorrow's uh, Hangout page on the Photodex website and my own web. Oh, I'm sorry. 
as I wrap up, I'm losing my ability to speak here. Um, you will also, on the Google Hangout page, see links to the Photodex website and my own website. So you're welcome to reach out and ask me any questions. And I hope to see a lot of you back here tomorrow. Thanks. That's it.